We all know the classic games where you're small, like Pikmin, Katamari, Shadow of the Colossus. As kids, they captured our imaginations, either shrinking us down to appreciate the world from a new point of view, or supersizing its beasts and ruins so that they towered above us. And some more recent examples of games with bite-sized protagonists, such as Little Nightmares and It Takes Two, ended up being major hits when they were released. All of these games use their unique takes on scale to create a sense of awe, make players see the ordinary in a new way, and for some pretty cool puzzle solutions. Long gone are the days of yearning for huge open worlds that stretch for miles. I want more tiny games. Superland takes place in a sandbox that's only 9 square meters, and it's the perfect example of being small in a big world. Aside from being gorgeous, pretty much every object and obstacle you encounter is something from the normal world that now seems huge compared to the tiny toy you play as. It's actually a first-person metroidvania, which are kind of rare to come by, and it's full of power-ups, physics-based puzzles, and tons of hidden chests tucked away in every corner of the map. One cool feature that really clues you into just how small you are is the blur effect used on everything off in the distance. Gigantic trees, towering blades of grass, even the house whose backyard you're in. I still need to pick up the DLCs for Superland so that I can get ready for the sequel slash continuation of the series, Super World, whenever that comes out. I feel like a lot of people missed out on Unravel, which came out back in 2016. It has almost a stop-motion vibe to it and does a really great job at creating that childlike sense of wonder that being small makes you feel. The whole thread mechanic it's centered around is simple yet genius and makes for some really fun puzzles and platforming sections. If you want to play a well-made puzzle platforming adventure full of heart that makes you appreciate the little things in life, this is your game. Plus, it's just so adorable. Ooh, this is a good one, and I do use every possible opportunity I get to talk about it. Ghost of a Tale, which has a sequel in the works that I am very excited for. This one's a little different than the first two because you're not quite as small as a toy or a little thread guy. You play as a mouse in a rat-sized world, so you're about half the height of everyone else, which does give it this kind of diorama feel. It's not quite a metroidvania, but the level design is very interconnected and souls-like, with lots of height or verticality, as they say, and a bunch of unlockable shortcuts. A good portion of the game requires you to be stealthy, scurrying past enemies, through the rafters, and generally just being a small little guy searching for a way off the island you're imprisoned on. One of a kind game, if you play anything from this list, let it be Ghost of a Tale. But Stray is also a great one if you haven't given it a shot yet, it's a tough call. As for the scale, you're a cat in a human-sized world, so you're going to be jumping and climbing all over stuff. But even if you were regular-sized, like the many robots that you encounter, this city is still huge. Right from the very first area in the game, you're immediately shown just how small and insignificant you are. And looking up at the huge walls towering above you in these more open sections, just incredible. Especially considering that this whole place is completely contained inside of a massive bunker, essentially. You really can't go wrong with either of these titles, Cat and Mouse, both must-plays in my book. But if you want to get a little bit more old school, a little isometric and turn-based, also while playing as a mouse, this is Small Saga. I haven't played the full game, just the demo, but it does have many wonderful reviews. It's set underneath modern-day London, but for some reason this society of rodents is stuck in the Dark Ages with this very charming, mismatched medieval fantasy theme. Your weapon is a Swiss army knife, which you wear strapped to your back, and throughout your adventure you'll travel through grocery store aisles and across tiled kitchen floors as you seek revenge against the god who stole your tail. And the last game, The Plucky Squire, isn't out yet, but we should be able to play it later this year. It's being published by Devolver, and I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty big hit due to how unique the gameplay is. It mixes these 2D and 3D worlds together as you quite literally jump off the pages of a storybook. 
Everything looks super smooth based on this gameplay trailer, so I hope it ends up feeling just as good as it looks. But honestly, I'd play the game even without all the 3D stuff, it just looks that cool. But you tell me, I want to hear your thoughts on these small games and any other little ones that may have slipped past me. And if this small list of small games didn't satisfy you, fear not, because I have just the video for you. You may have noticed a certain category missing here, bug games. I'm very proud of this one, so go give it a watch if you've got a few minutes to spare.